what it was. Y'all know who it is. And uh, y'all tuned in with priceless knowledge of self. And this right here, this ain't nothing but some cosmic insight. And hey, it is with great pleasure that I can announce that we've reached our last and final installment in our Mercury in the Houses series. And uh, what that means is after this, you can now go back and check your Mercury by both house and sign because we done covered it all. Oh, I didn't hit them all. And uh, I also want to remind y'all of the deal I have going on right now. I'm offering for a limited time $50 audio NATO chart interpretations. And what that consists of is an hour and a half to two hour recording of me breaking down your chart. And I'm going to cover the growth aspects. We're going to cover the declinations. We're going to cover all your major planetary placements in traditional astrology. We're going to cover the karmic direction, which is the north and the south node. We'll talk about the elements and the modalities, the hemispheres, the quadrants. We'll talk about the things that are dominant in the most beautiful aspects of your chart. We'll talk about the more challenging things going on in your chart. We'll cover it all. And I'll also throw in a 30 to 40 page PDF typed up that's going to be professionally done. It's going to make sure everything's on point. So if you want the tangible version, you'll have that as well. OK, and you can't beat that. If you think that's a lot of money, you're tripping. That's a deal. And it's significantly cheaper than what I usually charge. And this is for a limited time because I'm in a tight spot, man. I need you all to come through for me. I had a financial emergency come up that uh <laughs> Knock me off my feet, man. And I need to make some money. If you don't want your chart read or you've already had your chart read, show me some love. Donate to the channel, man. If you feel like I go hard, man, do that for me. The link is in the description, man. If not, bring some direct, some business my direction. I'll also offer $40 numerology readings, which that'll be about an hour long of me breaking down your personal numbers. There won't be a PDF with that, but, uh, I'm going to go hard with that, too. OK, that also goes for sinistry. I'll do sixty dollar sinistry readings and that'll be another hour and a half to two hours long of me talking about the energies between you and whoever you want your chart broke down with. OK, so that's a little something to think about. And uh, now and, you know, that's kind of relevant to here because uh, that's kind of talking about other people's money. And we're going to go deep into that because this right here. <laughs> This is a little some some about those people that have Mercury in the eighth house of their natal chart. And see, before I even go there, if you don't know my style, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to tell you a little bit about Mercury. I'm going to give you all a quick breakdown of the energy that comes along with it and how it might affect you. Then we'll talk a little bit about what the eighth house of the astrological chart is all about. <laughs> then after that, we're going to bring it to a crescendo and then a climax, which, uh, that's my forte. So it ain't nothing to it but to do it, y'all. Let's get that done then. So Mercury. Mercury's named after the winged messenger of the gods. And just like him, he comes into our chart, commands us to speak. That's because he rules over communication, intellect, logic, reasoning, as well as our ability to create and express our thought processes. And then when something's referred to as having a mercurial nature, the first thing that comes to mind for me is restlessness and motion. That's because Things happen fast with Mercury, and that also makes it about quick wit, quick thinking, possibilities, opinions, reasoning, and the ability to rationalize shit. And uh, this can be both good and bad, but either way it goes with Mercury, it's going to be energizing. And this planet right here, it prompts us to move on from one thing to the next and get answers on both the physical and the psychological level. And uh, this is dexterous and perceptive energy that rules over our short trips, our siblings, especially our younger siblings, uh, transportation in general, speaking, writing, books, online communication, and learning. All that comes under Mercury's domain. And uh, also understand that Mercury is never going to be more than 28 degrees away from the sun. It only takes about 88 days to traverse its whole zodiac or to traverse its whole orbit. Pardon me. And uh, it rules the signs of Gemini and Virgo, as well as the third and the sixth house of the natal chart. And uh, it's neither feminine nor masculine energetically. It kind of assumes the gender of whatever sign that it's in. And speaking of Mercury sign, this is going to point to our basic attitude, our mental habits, our communication style. Now, the house placement, that shows what area of life that plays in the most. And that shows what area of life that we're most comfortable operating in from a mental standpoint. All right. And so now we're on to the eighth house. Mm -hmm. It's going to get sexy. Mm -hmm. And uh, the eighth house is ruled by Scorpio and the planets of Pluto and Mars to a lesser degree. And the uh, this is a mysterious sector that rules over birth and death and sex and transformation and mysteries and merged energies and bonding at the deepest level. 
the deepest. <laughs> you know, and it's also the house of other people's money and property. And traditionally, it's been called the house of sex, death, taxes, secrets, and power. <laughs> and I couldn't agree more, man. This is the house of the taboo. And uh, this is the place of hidden mysteries. And the biggest of which is that final transformation that we must all go through, man. Death. It's here where we find the deepest emotional wells and the secrets of a soul that unfold throughout a lifetime. <laughs> and uh, a big part of the reason that it's so feared is, is the power that it has to end our old way of being. And the eighth, it involves the soul level changes that we must go through during an existence. And the many deaths or transformations, you know, they're kind of played out by whatever signs on the cusp and the planetary placements that are here, man. And it's also all about compulsions and obsessions and primal entanglement oh yeah so in latin the orgasm is known as le petit mortit or the little death and that's because you know it's here that uh in this moment that we're more than body and so accordingly that's why both sex and death are connected here in the eighth house and uh there's so much more we go deeper into the abyss but uh i think you get the gist <laughs> so and we're talking about Mercury and we're taking Mercury and we're putting Mercury in the eighth house. <sighs> I guess y'all want me to tell y'all that this is somebody with a dirty mind, huh? <laughs> or maybe you want me to say that they consistently think about death and darkness. <laughs> well, while those are definitely factors here. I want you to first understand that more than anything else, what this points to for me is a deeply probing mindset. Oh yeah, man, that really knows the immense power of words and ideas. And uh, when it comes to attitude and when it comes to demeanor, there ain't no bones about it, man. Regardless of whatever the fuck their Mercury sign is, man, hey, they gonna have a little scorpion mixed into that mindset. Oh, yeah, which means a lot. I mean, a lot of deep shit. But on the surface, it's really just going to suggest a more reserved and somewhat, you know, observant individual who's inherently fascinated with the deepest mysteries of life. And, you know, it's all about what happens in that final transformation from this plane to the next. OK, however, you know, you'll probably never really know what the fuck these people be thinking because, you know, they really like to keep their thoughts to themselves. You know, this is really a secret and private thinker. And uh trust is everything to these people. I mean, everything. And uh it have it has to be established absolutely before they'll ever truly open up. But the thing with that is they don't really trust nobody. So, <laughs> you know, they kind of prefer to do their thing in private, which my eighth house Gemini and uh, I have Chiron in the black uh, Chiron and the black moon Lilith in Gemini right here, man. They definitely recognize this energy well. And uh, I understand it like a motherfucker, man. And moving on from that, don't forget that Mercury shows how we think. OK, and people with an eighth house Mercury are actually blessed because, you know, they typically have excellent. I mean, excellent research skills due to their immense intensity of focus. OK, plus superficial answers ain't going to never fly for them ever because they're all about getting to the heart of a matter you know this is somebody who cannot stand small talk y'all i'm telling you right off the rip man no if you ain't trying to have a viscerally deep conversation with them <laughs> then uh just leave them the fuck alone man and uh i'd also advise you to never attempt to lie to them either never because uh they see past the bullshit man and uh if there's the slightest element of doubt in there, man, uh, that investigative mind that they have hey, is going to find out what the real is. Best believe, man. That's why they make some of the most amazing psychologists and scientists and detectives and investigators that you're ever going to see, man. And that's what it is. <laughs> hey, man, I mean that, that you'll ever gonna see man these are people who want to understand the world at the deepest level i mean as deep as you can go so their thirst for knowledge is often going to lead them to an understanding of things that most people could never achieve best believe that so superficial knowledge it just ain't gonna do it just ain't gonna do man they gotta go deeper which often kind of leads them into that fascination with the esoteric with the occult with death and the life after that 
<laughs> I'm talking about that leads him to that fascination with sex and the taboo and all things mysterious. Because they want to know everything. Everything. Plus, they're also highly, highly intuitive. <laughs> so, you know, their intuition and their conscious mind, they're kind of intertwined with this one, man. And uh, that indicates a certain mental sensitivity that can lead them to getting overwhelmed, you know, when, you know, that's especially when they get stuck in an overly chaotic or loud environment, man, they're going to have to back up and get the fuck away from that, man. And all that together is probably a humongous reason why these folks are so reserved and introverted. Not to mention, hey, these motherfuckers here, they have an uncanny insight into human nature because an eighth house Mercury, you know, this is somebody who's highly gifted with an intuitive understanding of psychology. So they don't trust anybody because really it's just because of the fact that they they can really see people's hidden motives, man. They know people's hidden motivations and, you know, all that shit's usually an open book to them. So it's hard for them to ever even try to trust anybody. Plus, for some reason, People are always coming to them for guidance about deep, nasty and dark shit that, you know, they don't feel comfortable talking to anybody else about. And they'll probably help them and bring healing to them, but they ain't going to trust them now that they didn't see that nastiness. <laughs> it's interesting, man. Then, you know, when you try to couple that with the fact that they really absorb the, the absorb the vibes of everything, especially when it comes to the people that are around them and they can sense when something is off. You can just see another reason why they don't trust anybody so to say that these people right here are not gullible <laughs> that would be a colossal understatement best believe man and let me also say that these are the type of people who use words masterfully i mean masterfully and manipulation can easily develop into a second language for them so be careful man you know this is a tough nut to crack <laughs> and uh if we're speaking on busting nuts <laughs> i'd be you know I'd be out of line if, if I didn't, you know, acknowledge how much these folks think about sex and probably openly speak about their desires, too, because sexual dissatisfaction, you know, uh, that ain't gonna fly for them. They need to be satisfied. If that shit ain't in point, uh, that shit probably ain't gonna last straight up. Not with somebody with Mercury in the eighth, man. And lastly, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with all this darkness and depth and intensity, you know, your mental stability and your mental health can really suffer from that. So all I can say about that is you got to make sure that we're taking care of ourselves and doing whatever we need to do to be stronger than the bullshit that we have going on in here. All right. But hey, even if it don't play out like that, just because you built like that, you don't have to build like that. And what I mean is we all have all this energy available to us. What you do with it is what you do with it. And even beyond that, it's not about what you do. It's about how you do it. And that's some priceless knowledge in itself. And there's been some priceless knowledge of self. Hey, I appreciate all the love and support. If y'all are looking for any of the readings, especially with the sale I got going on, man, y'all can either hit me up in the comments below or you can email me at mr.turner1300 at gmail.com, which is actually my preference. And the same thing goes if y'all looking for some merch, man, because uh, y'all know we be fly. <laughs> hey, I appreciate all the love and support, man. Y'all keep it true till next time because that's all I'm going to do. That's all I know how to do. This concludes our series on Mercury. And let's be talking about aspects, which we will eventually. Y'all keep it true.